Why would someone decapitate Russell Derman, an 88-year-old retired man, living out his golden years with his wife in a beautiful lake community in Georgia? And today, we're asking another question. Why would someone murder his 87-year-old wife, Shirley, and dump her body in the lake five miles from their home? This is such a troubling case, such a gruesome crime, it has everyone, including me, wondering, is there something in the Dermans' past that would relate to some form of a motive here? Or is this just a random crime? And if so, will investigators ever be able to figure it all out? Marty, it's happy. Ronnie Sorrell could barely hold back the tears as he talked about finding the body of 87-year-old Shirley Derman. He and another neighbor were out fishing on Lake Oconee Friday afternoon when they spotted something they first thought was a buoy. It became apparent as we pulled closer that it wasn't just, you know, some floating in the water. It was, uh, it was a person. I stress to you, the body's uh, de decomposed. But no, her head was not removed or anything glaring like that. Shirley Derman vanished two weeks ago. At the same time, someone killed then beheaded her husband, Russell Derman, inside their lakefront home. If you think I'm frustrated to the point of giving up or something like that, that damn sure isn't the case. Ronnie Sorrell spent three years in combat in Vietnam, but he says nothing has affected him like what he saw Friday afternoon. He hopes the family gets closure, too. What makes the difference is is it how someone can take a life and just throw it away. I can tell you the mindset of the individual who did this was a homicidal individual that, that doesn't that deserve to breathe the air on this earth. A huge development in the case. Mike Brooks with me. Mike, let's walk through the timeline of this case because it's taken some time to get to where we are right now. Right. And here they are, uh, Russell and Shirley Derman, May 2nd is the last time he was seen alive. Right. On May 1st, he was at the pharmacy at the Publix right there in Linger Longer Road, just a short distance from his house. And then on the 2nd, one of his neighbors thought they saw him at the golf course because he was an avid golfer just a short distance from Retired his house. Retired guy, that's what they yeah. do, right? Then it's sometime between May 2nd and May 4th that Russell Derman is killed and his wife, Shirley Derman, disappears. No one, nobody found them. No, because that's Saturday. They were supposed to be at a Kentucky Derby viewing party. Nobody, they didn't show up. So finally, a few days later, the, people, the neighbors went to check on them, and that's when they found him in the garage decapitated. Okay, now we move forward. May 6th, neighbors find Russell Derman's headless body in his garage. Then we move forward to May 9th. An autopsy determines that Russell Derman died from cranial cerebral trauma. Amazing all the things they could figure out because they still have not recovered his head. No, but apparently the way it was taken off, his head was taken off his body, that was the cause of death. Okay, then we flash forward to May 16th. Shirley Derman is found dead in Lake Oconee, five miles from their home, Mike. And an autopsy there reveals that she died from blunt force trauma to the head. So that's where we are. Let's bring in the reporter. We've got joining us on the phone, multimedia journalist Anita O oh from uh, 13 WMAZ in Central Georgia. Anita, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. So what are they saying about the investigation? Where does, where, does this change the way they're looking at the case, the, fa the fact that Shirley Derman is not a missing abducted person but is now the second murder victim found five miles from the home? I think it definitely gives them some new insight into the case. For two weeks, they had no leads, they had no motive, um, and although they're still investigating all of that, the fact that there is a body now and autopsy results determine that uh, Shirley Derman died from some sort of blunt force trauma to the head. Um, so now they have a little bit more to work with. Anita, would you describe people in that neighborhood as being scared that perhaps this is some sort of random or serial type killer out there? versus these, these, this couple was specifically targeted? You know, I think in the beginning, in the very beginning, um, when there were not when there was not much information, I think I definitely think there was a lot of panic. There was a lot of fear there. Now the sheriff is very adamant that this seems to be a very targeted um, killing that was motivated. Uh, very specifically um, for the Dermans. So now I think in the community there's a lot less fear. There's, you know, he's made it clear that there is no serial killer on the loose. So I definitely think he's quelled some of those uh, fears. Anita, what do we know about the, the, the children, the family of the Dermans? I know one son was murdered. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But how about the, the living children? Have they been around town? 
Right. So they have two sons and a daughter um, as well. Um, they have been in Putnam County in and out helping with the investigation. They've kind of gone back to their respective homes in North Carolina and Florida, um, but the sheriff does not have any you know, reason to think that they would be involved in this. And, you know, Mike, as we take a look, I want to take a look. We put up there it is. That's, that's, yeah. that's the map I want to look at. You're talking about five miles. You look at the lake and all the nooks and crannies there. That's where the body's found. It didn't float there from the home. Someone had to put that body in a boat and, and dispose of it, don't you think? Absolutely, because they believe they came in by boat, and they would live at the end of a cove. So, but, the, but to get back to where they found the bo her body, which was by the Long Shoals boat ramp, between the Long Shoals boat ramp and the dam, the Wallace Dam, it's a, it's a good way. It's probably by, by boat, not that far, but still a good distance to wind your way through there. Unfortunately, I'm hardened on things like that. I just physically pulled this body out of the lake. And so that type of emotion, the, emo the emotional impact that we have, quite honestly, is when we notify family members, when you sit there with children, whether they're, you know, regardless of their age, and you have to tell the children, you're the one that has to tell them that, that's the emotional impact. 88 and 87 years old, living out their golden years in a beautiful, beautiful home on the lake here in Georgia. And then it ends up like this. He's decapitated. His body found in the garage. Her body dumped in the lake five miles from the home. Why would someone do this? What is going on here? Well, the Dermans' pastor is Reverend David Key, and Reverend Key joins me now live on the phone. Uh, Reverend, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, sure, Vanny. Good to be back with you. Well, the latest development uh, over the weekend is the worst-case scenario is that Shirley's uh, body was found and recovered, so there's no chance of finding her alive. She, you know, she's now the second murder victim here. What has that done to the community now that we're looking at a double murder rather than there's a chance, a hope, that Shirley was still out there? Well, we, of course, did have that hope that she would come back alive to us. Now that we know that that's not the situation, at least there's been resolution that has occurred in this situation. We now, at least as far as knowing where she is. So the, the passing of Shirley does give us uh, now two victims that we're grieving the loss of. Um, but we're not with the uncertainty of where she is or if she was suffering or under any kind of um, bad thing happening to her uh, while we were waiting. Um, you know, we pray that, you know, with her, um, uh, the, the way she died, we're hoping that she suffered very little. We hope that she didn't uh, know what had happened to Russ. Uh, and so those are the things we kind of cling to, hoping that uh, uh, whatever the dynamics were around Shirley, that she suffered as little as possible and, and truly did not know what they did to Russ. And David, as people, you know, hear about the story and think about it, myself included, it just seems like it's, you know, a nice couple that are living out their golden years. They found a beautiful place to live on the lake, nice community with nice people. Is there anything that anyone has said that has indicated otherwise about the Dermans that, they're, they're, that someone in their past had an ax to grind? Uh, no, um, Denny, and, you know, the, the, the Germans that we knew, Shirley and Russ, that we've known for the last uh, decade and a half had, were wonderful people. Uh, certainly didn't deserve what happened to them and would be some of the last people you'd expect to happen to them. So the focus of the community now is in support of Sheriff Seals and trying to find out who did it because the next step in all of this is, to discover who were the who either one person or multiple people did this activity and then why, and so that is the next phase that we're kind of looking toward is to uh, discover who those people are, and then that will give us better answers to some of the questions. Reverend, is there any concern in the community that this was a, a random attack and it might just be a killer who has no motive other than to just kill? people and 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 perhaps strike again that is one possibility of course um it's not the only possibility and again i think we're fairly confident uh in our law enforcement here and the fbi that's that's come in to assist 
So we do trust that they are on top of this and they're discovering it. They're, as Sheriff Seals has been quoted earlier, everybody's a suspect. So they're working through any possible scenarios that could have happened. Um, and we, we do want them to be found. So, yes, there is a certain fear out there. It is not the dominating uh, dynamic uh, out here. Um, and we're just waiting to see what uh, um, what evidence, what, what future um information can be discovered to, to find out who these people were. Reverend David Key, Durman Family Pastor, appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Vinny. Appreciate it.